I used to own a 3D printing business and now I do not. Business. I thought it was gonna be all cool designs, running a bunch of printers and making money. So you have a 3D printing business that is starting to grow and you're thinking of really growing your 3D print farm. You maybe have a few machines that have started to do basic prototypes and that kind of stuff for your store and are keeping up with a dozen or so orders a week, but you think you can go more. What is it gonna to take to upgrade all of your printers and keep on growing from there? In this video, we're gonna go through what it takes to build up a print farm for your e-commerce business. So when building a print farm, you have to realize that you are building building a factory. This is what you're going to do. A factory has to be managed, it requires time, and it requires maintenance. These are the things that many people don't realize. They think that 3D printing as a hobby is fun, but until then you have to start changing nozzles and maintaining machines and collecting parts continuously. The question that you need to ask right off the bat, as the business grows, do you want to operate machinery and run the business with customer support and packing boxes and designing new products and all the rest of it, in addition to also running the machines? That is the first thing to be very truthful about yourself when you are considering growing a print farm because a print farm is another job. And whereas small business owners have multiple jobs and have to wear multiple hats, it is important to decide which ones do you wanna take and which ones do you not wanna take. Now, you decide to go ahead and move into a print farm. What are the things you need to be aware of? Well, the first thing you need to be aware of is which printers are you going to use and how long are they gonna last you? You need to say, okay, well, these are the existing printers that I have. Do you wanna get more because you have familiarity with them or do you want to get the latest and greatest so that they sustain and improve what you were already doing? The latest and greatest may be more expensive, but they can run longer and give a higher quality product for you. Or you can get existing whatever you have if you're using older style like reality sort of machines which are cheaper and quicker and may pay themselves off faster, but also need to be cycled through. This is the danger with 3D print farms. Most 3D print farms are built with consumer level machines and those consumer level machines are consumer products that are designed to effectively burn out after two years. Now, this is not true of every single one of those machines, but again, it's the thing to be aware of depending on what machine you pick, how you are deciding to optimize on cost. This might be a high resolution printer that costs only a hundred bucks, but how long does it actually operate before you have to replace it again? So choosing the machine is important. Then you have to choose the space. You probably are not gonna get to keep them all in the bedroom. That's probably not a great idea. As soon as you hit 10 to 20 machines, that's probably when you need a separate space, a separate office, maybe a little industrial space. You will eventually probably have to move into an external space because the rest of the business is growing. You can generally find space for uh, that's a, like a thousand square feet to where you can put in 10, 20 machines inside of there, operate out of that, do packing and shipping and that kind of thing. But that space has to have enough power. At 10 or 20 machines, this is not that big of a deal. If you start growing into 100 machines, then you're gonna have to start paying for power and that will be a discovery in and of itself. Next, you have to look at materials. Whatever material you're using right now, you need to be sure that you can get more of it. If you're starting out with a couple machines, you're probably buying it off of Amazon. That is fine, but two dirty little secrets about Amazon purchasing. Once you get to November, your favorite filament will no longer be available because everybody is buying it. So you need to get maybe supplier relationships or find other sources of it that are backups that are still consistent and reliable. Can you get the same color black in between different batches? This is also just a concern as you scale. Black is not black is not black. The black of my hat is not the same color as the black of my jacket. Even though they may look like it on camera, they're not. This same thing applies for filament. And if you're dealing with cheap filament and that kind of thing, you may have high variability in between batches. So you might order from the same supplier, but then that black will be different from the last one. And customers might notice if it's a problem. Generally inside of 3D printing, this is not a huge deal because an individual customer will see just the one part that they ordered and then the next guy will see the one part that they ordered and they won't realize that they're different sets of black. But if you're doing collections or large batches, that can be an issue. So you've got the printers, you've got the space, you've got the power, you've got the material. Pretty darn good, right? Now you need the expertise and the help. If you're running a print farm, we're circling back around to the fact that you have to operate the print farm. As easy as 3D printing is, it is still a hobby and an expertise. So ideally, you don't want to have to do this yourself forever. You wanna grow the business, which means you need employees. You need to consider how hard it is to operate your printers because you will have to train someone to operate those printers. Are there weird little hacks that only you know? Are there training materials that they need to know? Is there a weirdness about that machine that again, only you know? If you hire someone, do they become the expert so that if they leave or are sick one day, Again, you're lost and unable to operate the system because that one's got some weird jerry rig to it that no one else understands. This is the danger with a print farm. 
when you have 10 or 20 machines, very likely a few of those machines will start to be a little bit different from some of the other ones and you have to be aware of that. And last thing with a print farm, if you're gonna get more machines, what are you going to make with them? Are you, can you just continue to make more of the single item that was popular, which is the ideal situation. You wanna make few of things as you possibly can because that is how the most successful 3D printing businesses have grown. But you may have to start introducing new things in order to keep the machines busy. There's also the question of, do you need to keep the machines busy or do you need to just wait until the next wave as it comes by? This is the question of like, how do you maintain demand for this? Because once you buy the 10 or 20 machines and have the lease, now you have obligations. This is all things that you have to maintain. The rent will be due every single month. So if you're going to grow the business and create a print farm, all of the associated requirements and obligations come along with it. And while it may be really fun in this moment, it may not be fun forever. But just be aware of all of these conditions when you're starting a print farm. You need to make sure that you have machines that are good and reliable over the time that you need them for. And there's plenty of people making calculators about how many parts do you need to produce per machine in order to pay off that machine over time. And there are lots of discussions around how to market, how to grow, where to get leases, how much power do you need for that machine. All of those are tools and resources available at other channels and coming up on this channel. But there is one way of getting out of this, which is to go ahead and use a service like Teleport where you can have a 3D print farm on demand. It'll just make the parts for you without you having to actually worry about paying for the lease and paying for all the machines and finding what the latest and greatest is. You just have a print farm on tap so that as your business grows, when you make more sales, well, Slant3D has to figure out how to get more printers to produce your parts for you. But given the fact that the Slant Mega Farm is spec'd out for about 3,000 machines, you probably have enough machinery for whatever it is you're gonna do without having a big challenge there. So instead of having to pay the rent and figure out what the latest and greatest machine is, maybe you could just try out Teleport and that's a way to grow your business without having to worry about all of the shenanigans of running the print farm. You can just focus on growing your business. Have a great day, everybody.